Hi all, welcome to another session of Cloud Integration Series. Now today's session, we'll talk about B2B integration. B2B stands for Business to Business Integration. In simple terms, it defines the process of purchasing and selling of goods between organizations. It is the automation of business processes and communication between two or more organizations. It allows them to work and trade more effectively with either customers, suppliers, and business partners by automating the business processes. B2B integration software provides the architecture needed to process the information and quickly route it through an organization's trading ecosystem. Right? A way back, the communication between buyer and supplier used to be done something like this. Buyer used to generate the purchase order. So the purchase order defines what the order requires and the quantity of it as well. So he sends that either via email or fax it to the supplier. The supplier then enters that order into the internal system and prints an invoice. Right? This invoice consists of the amount for each order. And he also he sends this invoice back to the buyer again. So the buyer enters invoice into the internal system for processing again. So if you see this, it involves a lot of paper and people, right? And um, with the concept of digitalization in the modern world, the expectations of partners and customers have increased a lot. And so the organizations are finding this slow, inefficient, error-prone manual processing of information not an efficient way of processing in a digitally connected world. And also, uh, every business has its own different kind of systems and applications for exchanging files and messages with partners. And with the increased number of technologies, it becomes very difficult to communicate, right? And also to achieve goals like increasing revenue, speeding time to market, and improving efficiencies, organizations need a successful business network. And that requires a modern B2B integration solution, right? With the right B2B tools, organizations can digitally connect and communicate quickly. This can reduce the time it takes to get new products and services to market and help companies to achieve success, right? So there came the concept of P2B EDI. EDI stands for Electronic Data Interchange. It is the computer to computer exchange of business documents in a standard electronic format between business partners. Companies use EDI systems to exchange business information automatically by computer and paperless transactions. In the earlier manual processing, we have seen a lot of paper and people involved, right? But here you can see the purchase order being sent directly to the supplier's internal system and generates an invoice out of it. And the invoice is again sent directly to the buyer's internal system, right? So having people involved slows down the processing of documents and also can introduce errors. But here, the EDA documents can flow straight through the appropriate application on the computer and the processing can begin immediately, right? Let's see the different terminologies involved in B2B. So let's first start with business documents. There are many documents that are typically exchanged between businesses. The most common documents exchanged via EDI are uh, purchase orders, invoices, and advance ship notices, etc. But there are many, many others such as like a uh, bill of landing, uh, custom documents, inventory documents, shipping status documents, payment documents, and many more. Standard format. Since the EDA documents must be processed by computers rather than humans, a standard format must be used so that the computer will be able to read and understand the documents. A standard format describes what each piece of information is and in what format. Say, for example, whether it is an integer or decimal, the date format, etc. Without a standard format, each company would send documents using its company-specific format. 
say for example english speaking person uh, cannot understand japanese right similarly the receiver's computer system might not be able to understand the company specific format of the sender right there are several eds standards in use today uh, like ansi edifac etc and for each standard there are many different versions like ansi 5010 edifac version d12 release a etc when two businesses decide to exchange eda documents they must agree on the specific eda standard and version to use businesses typically use an eda translator either as in house software or as an eda service provider this helps to translate the eda format so the data can be used by their internal application and can be sent straight through processing the documents right then business partners the exchange of eda documents is typically between two different companies referred to as business partners or trading partners say for example company a may buy goods from company b company a sends orders to company b so company a and b are business partners here yeah? next eda document an eda document is comprised of data elements segments and envelopes that are formatted according to the rules of a particular eda standard when you are creating an eda document say purchase order you must follow strict formatting rules of the standard you are using these rules define exactly where and how each piece of information in the document will be found that way when the eda translator on the receiving computer reads an incoming purchase order it will immediately understand where to buy, find the buyer's company name the purchase order number the items being ordered price for each item etc then the data will be fed into the receiver's order entry system in the proper internal format without requiring any manual order entry right in the eda language a single business document such as purchase order invoice or advance ship notice is called a transaction set or a message the transaction set is comprised of data elements segments and envelopes right a sample edf file looks like this each one is called a segment here the start segment bg segment ref segment and each segment terminates with a segment terminator probably a tilde and these are called the delimiters star is a delimiter here and here these are called the qualifiers ia st here defines the transaction set header it indicates the start of the transaction set and assigns a control number and bag is the beginning segment for purchase order ref here specifies the identifying information right and dtm here is the date time reference you can find the date time here and these are the loops so here n1 refers to the name uh, n3 is the address information n4 is geographic location etc and p01 these are loops repeating loops over here you can see p01 p01 so these are the identify instances and uh, p01 is used to specify basic and most frequently used line item data right pid here refers to product or item description it defines you the product right ctt here is loop transaction totals so which means it tells you how many loops are here and sc is transaction set trailer so this standard can be downloaded anywhere from online right so it looks something like this so here it gives you clear uh, description what is the st segment what are these loops etc right then b2b integration platform a b2b integration platform helps companies to integrate all their b2b and eda processes across all their partners the platform collects data from source applications translates the data into standardized formats and sends it to business partners using the appropriate transport protocol B2B integration software is available for on-premise or cloud services as well. Okay. So that's the end of our session. Thank you.